My name is Tom Novacek. I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon at Gillette Children's Specialty Healthcare in St. Paul, Minnesota. I'm Associate Medical Director at the hospital and Professor of Orthopedics at the University of Minnesota. Cerebral palsy is a neurological condition and as such it affects the brain. We know that the brain is the main controller of movement and walking. In addition to those primary neurological problems, there are secondary effects in the musculoskeletal system where the muscles and the bones and joints may not grow and develop properly. And as a result, muscles and joints can be tight, uh, bones can be out of alignment, and all of those factors can work together to adversely affect cerebral palsy gait. The term bilateral cerebral palsy refers to individuals who have effect on both sides. These gait patterns are much more difficult to classify and they're much more variable and this is the reason that gait analysis is so important because it can uh, break the, these complex movement patterns down into all three planes and then we can evaluate all three planes individually for each body segment of each joint. One of the real examples of that is uh, the differentiation between true equinus and apparent equinus. In both cases, uh, you may not have the foot flat on the ground, uh, so you can be toe walking. But in one case, that's due to the primary pathology, the ankle stiffness in the ankle. In the other case, for parent equinus, uh, it's because of uh, problems upstream, particularly with the knee with excessive knee flexion. Jump gait is a gait pattern that is fairly common for children at ages seven to nine with bilateral cerebral. Uh, maybe they've started to be up on their toe, but their knee is still in a good position. Uh, so they maintain their knee in full extension. They may land with their knee excessively flexed, but during mid stains their knee is in full extension. If things continue to progress and worsen, then the jump gait can develop into crouch gait. Crouch gait is difficult to define. Most people would define it as being excessive knee flexion during stance phase, and the, the ankle is excessively coarse flexed. Gait patterns can progress from equinus to jump gait to crouch gait and increasingly severe 